my most powerful weapon is actually my mindset of where I place my thoughts, where I focus, and what I believe in. And those create a loop. Thoughts direct focus, focus directs an action that powers up a belief, a belief powers a thought, and they create this little loop. And when people appreciate that, then the entrepreneurial journey shifts. And it shifts in your favor. What if you could reclaim hours of free time each week, create legacy building wealth, and devote more energy to your passion projects without giving up on your career as a life-saving MD? Dr. Vikram Raya is a functional cardiologist, high-performance coach, and real estate expert, is here to give you the tools, strategies, and solutions you need to transform your life. Unlock your limitless potential and achieve greatness, all while freeing up your precious time. Welcome to Limitless MD. Let's dive in. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Limitless MD. I'm your host, Vikram Ryan. Today we have Alden Mills. Alden is a CEO of, of Perfect Fitness. He's a founder of multiple businesses. He's a world acclaimed author. He's written two amazing books, Be Unstoppable. And even um, more uh, well-known among a lot of business folks is Unstoppable Teams, which was listed on Forbes as one of the number one books on leadership. He's a three-time Navy SEAL platoon commander. He's a recognized rower, a keynote speaker. I mean, I can go on. But today, we're going to have a powerful discussion on many things that physicians and entrepreneurs will need to be successful in life. And I would say the key pivot of all of it is is mindset. And so Alden, welcome to the show. It is so great to be here. And I'd like you to add into my intro after all of those successes. And he's failed more than he's succeeded. There you go. Nice. I, I think that's an important thing to start everyone off with that, you know, when you go out and try something new for the first time, you're not always going to hit the cover off the ball. Actually, you're probably going to whiff in the beginning. And that, to me, is a whole part of the journey that we're all on. So let's talk about failure since you just went into it. Uh, I mean, when people look at you from the an external standpoint, they think, man, this guy's had it all. Um, you know, he's he was, he was forged in fire from a Navy SEAL team. And then, of course, he's going to be successful, right? That's that's yeah. what all Navy SEALs do. <laughs> and Navy right. SEALs a lot more have a lot more celebrity than some of the other special teams now, uh, special forces now out there. So... Uh, explain this sort of uh, expectancy for you guys to always crush it and how that's not necessarily true and what resources you have to dig in to figure everything out. I'm trying to think of the best way to kind of settle in the conversation with this. When you start training, there is an expectation that they are going to find a weakness in you and then they're going to exploit it. And they're going to want to see how well you do with failure. Are you going to sit and wallow and have a pity party and fall into a pit of despair? Or are you going to pull yourself back up, dust yourself off, and literally you'll be muddy, wet, and sandy, and get back at it and start giving it your all again? I mean, they, literally, that's a subjective evaluation that they do. When I started, and and I should, you know, set the audience straight here. Uh, at a young age, I was diagnosed with asthma. I was told that I had average, uh, smaller than average size lungs. And uh, I should lead a less active lifestyle and learn the game of chess. My mom, she had a different point of view. And she just kept saying, hey, don't, don't let someone else define your limits. You decide what you can or can't do. And I... And I rode that, it, you know, it took me a long time to get it, but I just kept embracing that indoctrination, that mindset, got to SEAL training, and then halfway through SEAL training, had a massive failure. Um, out on a three-mile swim, lungs are filling up with blood. I have to get pulled out, rushed to the hospital, blood tests, and they discover that I'm taking asthma medicine. And they're like, you, you're an asthmatic. You even shouldn't even be here. It's over. Get out of here. Uh, I went through a bunch of tests, basically made a deal with myself. I couldn't take the medicine anymore. But they found my weak part. 
my weakness right there, right? And they wanted to see like, okay, we're going to keep pushing them to quit, quit, quit. And they gave me just enough rope to let me back in. Of course, I had to prove and physically pass the things, but I had to re-go through five and a half weeks of training. And I had to be held back in this seven-week cell. I mean, it sucked to have to do just one day, let alone nearly six weeks of it. And it's that mindset of you are going to fail. The question will be, are you going to learn from that failure and get back up and give more? Or are you going to sit there and go, I can't believe I failed. I'm no good at this. And allow your focus to slip down a spiral of negative hypotheticals. I want to st- uh, stack on what you said. That failure, essentially, you're saying failure by you giving yourself that failure is inevitable. And just like, hey, it's either feedback or it's 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 the end of the rope. So decide which one it is. That that's that's a very powerful thing by you not even knowing that not even thinking, hey, maybe I'll make it, maybe I won't know. Hey, you know what? There may be many reasons I'm not gonna make it, but regardless, I'm gonna keep going until I get there. So uh how did that translate into business and life, man? I'll give you one way that it really translated a lot. And I and I use this term in my third book that will be coming out next year called Unstoppable Mindset. And I it's I spend chapters talking about focus. And there's this one thing they do again and again and again in SEAL training. And it's about getting you to focus on the moment versus the mountain. And I use that phrase, moment versus the mountain. Break. I'll give you a short story. We are told to clean the instructor's office right before Hell Week, okay? And Hell Week, when I was going through, is the sixth week of training. It goes from a Sunday night to a Friday afternoon. They give you a total of three and a half hours of sleep for the entire week. It's the biggest culling process in the first portion of SEAL training. At this point, I had started with 122. We're down to 36 on Friday. Okay, but we hadn't even started Hell Week yet. Hmm. And this instructor, he had this deep Southern accent. He's like, Anson Mills, I want you all to clean my office and you have one hour. All instructors will be gone for one hour. He was very specific about it. And I was like, that's odd. And we... And we go in there, there's 36 of us cleaning a small office space, right? You could get that done like that. And on the front desk, he had this huge manual. It was about that thick, three-inch white binder. And it said in huge block letters, Class 181 Hell Week Schedule. (laughs) And it was turned to face us as we walked in, right? That's just pure intimidation. You're right. And, and so two of my teammates come over and they grab the book and they're like, sir, we have the hell week schedule. We're going to go photocopy it and we'll know about everything that's going to happen next. And I was like, guys, don't you think it's a little obvious? It was the only thing on the desk. It was facing us. He gave us one hour, just enough time for you to go photocopy that. Don't you think this is a trap or something? Like, don't look at it. What what good is it going to do? Well, they go and they photocopy it. And they were roommates. What do you think happened to those two guys? Now, before you say anything, do you know how much you can get done when you have three eight-hour shifts of Navy SEALs harassing you for five and a half days? Do you know how many things you can do? (laughs) I mean, I, I didn't. But it was in the book. Yeah. So what do you think happened when they started flipping through and looking at everything? I think they got demoralized because they're like, they saw all of that, the craziness and they're like, you know, and they thought it was going to prepare them, but probably it made it worse. That's exactly what happened. They looked at the mountain of work and by Saturday, now remember we start on Sunday, they quit on Saturday, 24 hours after they got the book. They had gone through everything. They go, this is impossible. There's no way we can do this. Oh, my God. Look at all this stuff. Boom. Break. I tell you that short story to kind of set in motion the mountain versus the moment because that's exactly 
what would happen again and again when it came time for like launching these, the perfect push-up. Right? I remember that. Do you have any idea how many people told me, and I was out of money. I mean, we had uh, less than $25,000 because I had spent a million and a half creating the world's greatest fat burning device that no one ever got. Right. <laughs> I learned $1,475,000 worth of ways not to launch this product. And I'm left with just 25 grand, which wasn't enough to even pay the lawyers and the manufacturers. And they're like, Alden, we have to do this and we have to cut steel and we have to go get inventory and we have to get this marketing plan and we got to create a box and blah, blah, blah. We can't do it. I was like, well, can, let me just ask you this. What can we do right now? Well, we could probably get the CAD design done. Okay, let's get the CAD design done. I'll go talk to the manufacturer while you're working on the CAD design, see if we can't you know, do some inventory. I asked everybody for 90 days. 90 days. This, this little product, the perfect push-up, was one conversation multiple times a day from never happening. And it was always that conversation of coming, well, what can we do right now? What can we do in this moment? Let's not worry. Yeah, I understand. There's lots of big obstacles out there. But let's focus on this one. And when you ask about what's transferable, like what was one of the key transformations that I took away from SEAL training that anyone in your audience can take away? They don't have to go sit in cold water for hours to figure that out. Is to understand you can only do what you can do right now. Don't let your mind go down and look at the mountain of work, all the negative things, create negative hypotheticals, allow your focus to drift and not give it your all for this moment. And when you start to adopt a mindset like that, you can then start looking at failure as an opportunity. You can start to look at the positive side of any negative. And then you start to realize that, you know, my most powerful weapon is actually my mindset of where I place my thoughts, where I focus, and what I believe in. And those create a loop. Thoughts direct focus. Focus directs an action that powers up a belief. A belief powers a thought. And they create this little loop. And when people appreciate that, then the entrepreneurial journey shifts. And it shifts in your favor. I like I love the uh, move mountain versus the um, the moment analogy. I really like that um, because we we sometimes we just make things so huge, so big, and it's all about just taking that first step. The micro actions can yeah. sort of um, uh, create, and you and you and you marry a lot of these micro actions together, and you get create momentum, which which will eventually lead to the goal. Uh, and I like the negative hypothesis that we love to stack, and that's essentially the groundwork for the analysis of paralysis they like what if this what if this what if this and then they get into a frozen state and then they lose their physiology becomes you know negative and then they lose their momentum so let me ask you a question about um you know uh teams and, and corporations and companies what's what's the weakness you're seeing because you, you all talk about let's let's find the weakness and exploit it that's what the the seal, seals instructors were doing. Yeah. When you go into an organization, um, what do you normally see as a typical weakness? The very first thing, and, and to let your audience know, I do a lot of executive coaching. I do a lot of executive coaching and large uh, public speaking venues. And most of the time, the very first thing I see is someone isn't taking responsibility for their own lack of leadership. They will go do this. Oh, I have the wrong team members, or my team sucks, or these people don't get it. And it's all about someone else's problem. When you look at leading, and this is for anybody, and anybody who's listening, we are all leaders. The question will be how many people will follow us, but we're all leaders. You led yourself to start this podcast, 
Someone has led themselves to listen to this podcast. They are making conscious decisions, micro little decisions every moment of the day to lead them to do something. And by the way, how they lead them is deciding on what they decide they focus on, what thoughts they're attaching to, and what things do they want to accept as true, which is a belief, right? And so the first step when you look at trying to take a group of individuals and transform them into a team is making sure they understand that a team is nothing more than a reflection of its leaders. So my job, first half, is to go in, get some feedback to understand how this particular leader is leading, where their weaknesses are, hold a mirror up to them. And say, now, are you going to accept this? If you accept this and say, yeah, I, there's some things I need to work on, then we can get to work and I can give them some tools and frameworks and skills to help them improve. Because if anybody wants to improve, you can do it. This isn't earth shattering. I'm not trying to make one kind of leader. And there isn't like just 16 different types, right? It's, there's, um, there, there is as many leaders are there are personalities on the planet. And so let's be your authentic leader. And then that's the next thing that I'll find. And the next thing is the authenticity of the leader. Are they congruent? And what I mean by congruent is how they think, how they feel, and how they act are they in alignment? All of us have a sixth sense when we meet somebody and we're going through the evaluation in the very first seconds of meeting each other. Can I trust that person? Is that person a threat? Is that person really telling me what I should be knowing about that person? Or are they kind of BSing me, right? Or they're like, oh, yeah, hi, nice to see you. <laughs> Right, that sixth sense is something that comes from our heart and our gut. Right, we have these three intelligence centers where our thoughts, logic here, our heart, which is where our feelings are, and our gut is where our instincts are. And there are the same neurons in all three in smaller bundles in the heart and in the gut, but there are the same neurons. Now, the most are up here, but when you're congruent, you're in alignment with those three intelligence centers. And getting somebody to be authentic as a leader is probably one of the most important things I can help them with. Because once they're authentic, now people will trust you. Yeah, and when I they trust you, now we've got a foundation from which to build a team. Alden, I love the the intelligence centers, uh, and that that really resonates with like not all neurophysiology and things that we know in science, along with we know with, with sort of uh, mindset and sort of heart centered uh, thinking. So mm -hmm. that's powerful. Let's 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 talk about the components of an unstoppable mindset. What would you say is like sort of the top two or three things that if you really want to have this, and this is a precursor to what you're going to talk about in your book later later in the in in, in the season, uh, but what what does it take to have unstoppable mindset? So I will give, I, I'll talk at the highest level and I'll talk about the mindset loop. Okay. There are three key controllables for our mindset. They are our thoughts and our focus and our beliefs. Now I'm going to walk people through those three things and give them a high level. Okay. And I'd like people to think of it that one connects us to the next in the loop, right? I can just drawing an arrow of thoughts. Think of like a human head, think of a funnel and think of a, a belief like in a heart, right? Those three things from thoughts. We have two basic kinds of thoughts. I name them. They have a voice that is like a whiner. You know how hard this is going to be? Why do you think we can do this? You know, and those are negativity bias that we have to battle against all the time. And the other thought pattern is a winning thought pattern. Get up. 
try again. But the winning thought pattern whispers. It's a much quieter voice. And the reason I, I name these two basic thoughts in these two categories is that no thought hurts us, helps us until we attach to it. Now, we attach to it by focusing on it, okay? So how do we focus on something? I want people to think of focus like a funnel. It just funnels energy, which is in the form of a thought, to take an action. Now, there's lots of things I talk about in this focus funnel and how you can drive your focus, but you own your focus funnel. The key about your focus funnel is it's agnostic. It doesn't care what you put in it. It could put a helpful thought or a hurtful thought. You put a hurtful thought in there, as in, you know, you're trying to grow your business and you're now thinking of all the reasons why you can't. Well, that's a hurtful thought if your job is to try and grow your business, right? And all you're doing is thinking about why you can't. So you have to decide what you're going to put in it. It's agnostic. Number two, the focus funnel is a magnet. It attracts like energy. You start focusing on something positive, you start finding some other people who are like, yeah, I'm with you, Victor. I'm, I'm, I, I agree with that. And the negative people don't want to hang out with you because they want to be Eeyores and sit over there and talk about all the reasons why it can't be done, right? Misery loves company. And then we talk about the moment versus the mountain, right? On the focus funnel. Now, the third piece is after we have attached to a thought using our focus funnel is that we start making a decision on what we accept as true. We accept as true that I will never make it through Navy SEAL training because I have asthma and I have smaller than average size lungs. Okay, that's my belief. I make that belief. What do I do? I keep it in that loop. And I find more thoughts to attach to that belief that I'm going to focus on that's going to support the thing that I believe is true. Yeah. You see how they say if you fight for your limitations, you get to keep them. Bingo. And those are the three mechanisms that we get to control. And you can enter in anywhere in that mindset loop and change it. That's awesome. And I think that's the last the last sentence you said, I think is the most powerful, that we're the architect of this meta program that we're running. And so if we can manipulate it, understand how it works, and then, you know, diffuse it, if it's running in a negative spiral, that's super powerful. So this has been absolutely amazing, Alden, um, a ton of knowledge, a ton of insights, uh, years of, you know, looking into organizations, companies, in the military and just coming up with these distinctions that are helping individuals all over the country really up level. Um, what's the impact you want to have on the world, my friend? I'm looking to help a hundred million people achieve their goals. And if you were to carve that out, I'm probably shooting a little low. That's 1% of the population. I figure by the time I die, right? If we get to 10 billion, you get 100 million people, we can in, inject, infect, in the positive sense of the word, how to go out and do something we've never done before, then we can get them to do the same for a lot of other people because they're going to show, they're going to have so much confidence in what they do. So I'd like to have 100 million people have an unstoppable mindset. That's awesome, man. Oh, that and would, I know that, that would, that would shift the whole narrative of the world, man. Well, and by the way, we do it together because it's a team sport. There you go. Um, how can people learn more about you, get into your ecosystem, and um, I, uh, obviously get your books as well, which is Be Unstoppable and Unstoppable Teams, and then be on the lookout for the next one, guys, coming Unstoppable Mindset. They can go to alden-mills.com, alden-mills.com. My name, but we put a little dash between the N and the M so you don't miss it. Awesome, guys. Go to aldemills.com. Uh, the The link is going to be in the show notes. And um, I think he's given us a really amazing framework for this unstoppable mindset. And obviously, if if he's been able to overcome all these odds, he's embraced failure as inevitable, but realizes it's just data and feedback to go for his next, next success. 
He's talking to us about mo- moment versus the mountain. He's talking about alignment of your feel, think, and act, your heart, brain, and gut. And looking in the mirror as a leader and really getting a self-assessment as you as you as you move forward and and lead people. And then obviously we end with extreme ownership. So thank you, my friend. Phenomenal. Hey, thank you. Keep inspiring. Yeah. Love being on your show, Vikram. All right, guys. Thanks again for supporting the, the podcast and the YouTube channel. And uh, if you can uh, share with a friend, that'd be great. Until next time, guys, be phenomenal. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Limitless MD. If you found value from this episode, I encourage you to share this episode with a friend and let me know by leaving a review. For more information, make sure you check out the links in the show notes below or simply visit VikramRaya.com. Until next time, be phenomenal. Be phenomenal.